Oh, this is a hot hike. That has a Ooh. Awesome, great. The day started early with getting picked up from our resort and we're driven into town to meet up with the rest of the guests. Morning team and welcome back to another adventure. Uh, today me and my buddy Chris are going to be going on a Vanuatu eco tour uh, to explore one of the outer islands, Nunu Island and hike up a dormant volcano. We're bringing along my buddy Chris. Alright, let's get to it. The other guests arrived but rather than having to go with them in the minibus, we got to stay in the year. We've been told it'll take just a little bit over an hour to the north of the island to catch a banana boat. Just stopped to wait for some of the other guests to catch up. Let's uh, check out this view, guys. Seriously. The minibus caught up not too long after. We got back in the car and continued our journey north, past local villages, and varying terrain until eventually we made it to MR Wharf. Alright, we're here at MR Wharf. We're waiting for our boat over to Nuna Island. So that way, about a half an hour boat ride. Now then we'll be hiking up. It was here that we were told that our guide for the day would be Jackie, a young fellow from Tana who'd been working with Vanuatu Eco Tools for a little while now. We will give them good quality life jackets for our boat ride over to Nunar Island. There were quite a few other guests for the tour, which was great to see, as there had recently been some issues from people getting to Vanuatu with the collapse of the local airline. After a short wait, Jackie helped us all load onto the boat for our ride across to Nunar Island. The seas were fairly calm today, so we enjoyed our ride on a banana boat, which is a fiberglass hulled boat that the local Nivan people use for basically everything on the water. As we made our way towards the island, we had a great view of Mount Maro, the extinct volcano that we are going to be hiking up today. We've been told a few times by the guys that it's a bit of a hike, and that it's not a race to the top. So if we don't get all the way up there, then that's perfectly fine. You just Alright, now we're on Nuna Island uh, with Chris and Jackie. Let's get ready to hike. So it turned out that all the other guests were actually heading to another island and wouldn't Hi be guys. joining us on the hike. As the banana boat drove away, leaving us alone on the beach, we turned around and started our walk. Now we're starting to hike up the volcano. Alright. An amazing skill the new Vanuatu people have is to talk story or tell stories, and Jackie was absolutely no exception. As we walked along, he started to story in with us and began to tell us all about Vanuatu, local customs, and his culture. People do live on Nuna, and there's definitely signs of that, like this cow tied up on the side of the path. As we hiked higher, the vegetation became denser and the pass became less maintained. Jackie stopped along the way pointing out local vegetables and plants and told us all about them. Like this yam plant, which they grow up along bamboo poles because the longer the vines, the bigger the yams will be. Drop it. Did it yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, so if you uh, don't have water, you can just drink this. Well, we use it as a first aid kit. Yeah. Uh, when we have a fresh cut or fresh, fresh oh, wound, okay. which is bleeding, it's bleeding. That's when we put the juice on the. Uh, yeah. Then it will stop the bleeding. Oh. Cut my hands here. The other side, the, the skin is hanging off. But then I only use the juice. Yeah, four days I can take my hands very strong and one week and a half to pull the cover. Well, I was cutting cover and then peel it with like potato and then we grind it with the machine 
extract the juice with water and good to go. Yeah. <laughs> so the longer it grows, the stronger it gets. This is this a strong one? But this one is uh, probably two or three years. I think three years. Three years power. And yeah. it's good to harvest now. Yeah. But the longer it's there, it grows, the strong. stronger it gets. And okay. also the bigger the roots are. Yeah. As you get further up, the terrain does get a bit steeper and it does get harder. So if you're thinking of doing this day trip, keep that in mind. But Jackie did give us plenty of opportunities to stop, catch our breath and see the beautiful views as we made our way up. Eventually, the dense rainforest gives way to tall grass and windy conditions as you get closer to the top of the volcano. final push, you're there, at the top of Mount Marrow, the crater of an extinct volcano in Vanuatu, the happiest country on earth. an hour and a half to two hours to make it to the crater but we'd managed to smash it in just a bit over an hour big thanks to chris and jackie for pushing me to get there fast thanks guys couldn't have done it without you we spent a while at the top taking in the views but jackie let us know that we had to start making our way back down to make sure that we caught the boat that was taking us to our next island as we started to descend from the grassy plains back into the rainforest Jackie once again began to tell us story and of the cultures and customs of his home island of Tana. This is some wild carver that Jackie's pointed out for us. The walk back down was definitely easier, so we had more time to stop and admire nature as we went. Jackie's telling us this is a cocoa tree, uh, growing chocolate. It's not the biggest one. Uh, it's one of the biggest ones. Any of yams planting here mm -hmm. means that the owner is uh, planning to do a ceremony. Oh. That's why you plant many yams. Yams are very valuable in our culture. Right. Yeah. It is, it is one. Yeah, you can stuff it with the palm of your hand, but if it falls into this, this one, no, the, the big one there, the one that grow like a, this one, the big one. Yeah. Yeah. Our cow friend was still there on the way back. Those are the cabbage, and uh, the reason why we plant all these things in one garden is that they are different. Uh, Long term to we eventually made it back to the beach and Jackie pointed out our boat for the next phase of the adventure. Alright team, we made it. The wind is up. We went back down the hill, back down the mountain. We're about to jump on a boat to head over to our next stop over on Pele Island. Let's head on to our next destination over at Pele Island. This next boat ride was about 10 minutes long, heading from the beach on Nuna to the white sandy shores of Pele. 
As I said, the wind had picked up a little and was a bit strong on the trip over. But once we made it over to Pele, things had died down and it was looking relatively calm. The other guests had been over here for the morning while we were hiking and were spending some time snorkeling as we arrived. Team, welcome to Pele Island. We're gonna have a bit of a snorkel here. We're gonna have a relax, have some lunch, uh, and see what it's all about. The water looked absolutely amazing, and we've been told that to meet some dugongs during the morning, so we had to jump straight in. Unfortunately, we didn't see any dugongs today, but it was quickly time for lunch, and we built up a good hunger from our hike up the volcano. Lunch was local food made by one of the guest houses on Pele, and we got to enjoy it overlooking the turquoise waters. We even made a new friend on the beach. Us and the rest of the guests basically spent the next few hours relaxing on the white, sandy shores of Pele, listening to the waves lap against the beach. If you're in Port Vila or on Afate Island, this was an amazing trip that I think you should definitely organise to take if you have the opportunity. The clouds started to gather around the island, so the guys decided it was time to head back. I'm going to cut now to a few words from Jackie, our amazing guide who I would 100% recommend for any tour that you might want to take. <laughs> Hi everyone, uh, you're watching Going Pacific. Make sure to subscribe and like the video. Mwah.